Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show, and today we're getting back into the Robert Kiyosaki, man. Whichever day you guys are actually listening to this, it's all good. So grateful for another day to be alive, of course, with the craziness that continues to unravel and completely turn around the world. It's always about being in control with your feelings, being in control with what you can control. So without further ado, guys, we're going to be getting into this. It's called... Learn a little about a lot. First and foremost, Rich Dad's suggestion was, you want to know a little bit about a lot. See, Robert Kiyosaki, he wrote in his book, he said, in school and in the workplace, the popular opinion is the idea of specialization. That is, in order to make more money or get promoted, you need to specialize. This is why medical doctors immediately begin to seek specialties such as orthopedics or pediatrics. The same is true for accountants, architects, lawyers, pilots, and others. Break! My friend, Ty, love him to death. Big shout out to you, Ty. I love the fact that you are doing amazing things. You are going to or haven't already graduated from Harvard, uh, you know, the School of Dental Medicine. I can't be any more grateful for you because you were the guy that used to grab rebounds over me back in freshman year of high school. Now, Ty is going from graduating dental school and he's going to specialize in endodontics out there at the uh, University of California of Los Angeles, also known as UCLA. Why is he doing this? Is it because he really wants to do root, ca- root canal therapy? I doubt it. I'm going to tell you from a perspective because I used to be that dental assistant who would sit chair side with these endodontics. Omar, I still remember his name, out there at Philippa Sawyer, biggest bitch in the world, pediatrics, uh, pediatric dental practice in Crow's Nest, Australia, which is right, uh, it's right next to North Sydney, right? And... Those are the most boring procedures ever. He would literally look into this mega, mega ton microscope and he would just clean it out with all these bullshit ass color coded files. And it was, I, I, how the hell can you do that for 40 years? Now, Ty, I do and I do and I wish I do and I hope I really do and I hope I really know that I do. That I hope that you're getting into this because you love endodontics. You know what I mean? Because, ooh. That is one of the most boring professions in all of the free world. Now, resuming the break. So, his rich dad often admitted that schools reward people who study more and more about less and less. So what happened is that rich dad encouraged him to do the opposite. He said, hey, for a while, you know, uh, Robert Kiyosaki worked in that accounting department. Although he would probably never have been an accountant. He always wanted Robert Kiyosaki to know via osmosis how the work was done. See, Rich Dad knew he would pick up the jargon and sense of what is important and what is not. He also worked as a busboy and as a construction worker. See, guys, why am I telling you this? It's because within my career, my field of endeavor... I got paid only 600 U.S. dollars when I first started teaching. Okay, yes, I should have got paid 666, but I got 66 dollars less because, quote unquote, you are a black teacher. We pay only white teachers more. Went to the south of Thailand, got a thousand U.S. dollars. Now, a thousand is the standard for anywhere here in Thailand. International schools, te- uh, international school teachers can get anywhere between five thousand and ten thousand U.S. dollars a month, but you have to literally audition in Dubai in front of the biggest international schools in the world to get that job, only to be stressed out for the rest of your life. So, let's put this into context. Going back, I remember a girl had come up to me first. I can't remember which was first, uh, but one girl's name was Poop Gang. Uh, I still have her on my Facebook. I'm so happy for her. She still looks the same. And another girl's name was Fa. She was about 15 years old at the time, about five years ago or 14, 15. She spoke pretty interme- pre-intermediate English. One or the other. One came up to me and said, hey, she wants to learn son piset, son piset. I'm like, what the hell does son piset mean? That means private tutoring. And I'm like, oh, they do that here? And they're like, how much do you charge? And I severely underpriced myself because, again, I am going to charge myself based on what I know. Now, I would say, dude, $50 an hour. Sorry. 
you know, not for everyone, depending on what you're learning, but online, it's that price depending on what you are learning. If it's general conversation, yes, it is cheaper. Do you guys get it? You get what I'm saying, right? So she came to me, Fa came to me, and I started saying, I never asked myself one time, huh, maybe I should start like learning different things because the only bookstore we had out there was this piece of shit bookstore. It was the biggest piece of shit on the planet. And when I went to that bookstore, I would go to the bottom shelf, I would pick out a couple of things, and I'm like, ooh, this book is called English for Life. They teach all skills in here. I thought it was a good book at the time. It's funny because it wasn't until I moved here to Bangkok, I started looking at all these biz- uh, business books, pronunciation book, okay, uh, reading and writing book, listening and speaking book, conversation books, okay, uh, uh, business writing, uh, corporate finance, all these different things. And I'm like, wait, so you mean I could, I could teach all of this? I remember there were four Russian, uh, Russian students from the Russian embassy here in the heart of Bangkok. They were like, hey, they want to learn about business law. Can you do it? I said, yes. I said, how much? I said, okay, per head, per hour, it's going to be $20. So in one hour, I would make $80. Now, did that ever go through? No, but I understood the potentiality of the market. I started learning a little bit about everything. And guys, now... With the TOEFL IBT, I never taught that until last, uh, what is it, um, what is it, a few months ago. And a girl came to me. She said, hey, can you teach me TOEFL IBT? I said, oh, man. I said, give me about two days. I had to look over all the content, just stick my head in books. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. So I started teaching her. Boom, she got the score needed. Just like that. I didn't know, I didn't know about that before. And then I said, okay, let me join a TOEFL IBT group. And so I did. And then I started offering free services. And then I developed those into podcasts. And one of those podcasts is now the number three on my all-time playlist because a girl who I didn't know before came to me and said, can you teach me this? And I didn't even, I, I had never taught it before. I've heard of it, but never taught it before. And now I'm putting videos and all these other things out there in regards to that specific skill set. Boom! Guys, it's all about learning a little bit of a lot. And just to even put it into more perspective, you know, there are times where people buy my courses and I'm like, oh, my God, I just made this X amount, you know, while sleeping. Now, remember, I was only making six hundred dollars a month just seven years ago. Okay, yes, I was doing some private tutoring and I was getting probably anywhere between what, a hundred to about two hundred U.S. dollars on top of that, which is pretty good for especially that province in that time frame. But now, you know, in one day. I'm going to make that salary. I'm going to make 33% of that monthly salary and one day's work coming up real soon. I mean, this is what, I mean, that's the norm. Honestly, I would like to make that month's salary in one hour. That's what the ultimate goal is within five, you know, within probably about five years. By the time I hit 35, this is why I put a threshold on, hey, am I going to leave Thailand? Of course, because now I'm starting to get that broad area and you you know get a lot of listeners from around the world who are tuning in to me do you guys get it now i'm gonna shift focus (sighs) robert kiyosaki said in his book he said when i came out with my first book if you want to be rich and happy don't go to school a publisher had suggested that he change the title to the economics of education but robert kiyosaki was like man no 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 with that title like that i'll probably sell about two books two books okay one to my family one to my best friend The problem is they would expect it for free. See, the obnoxious title, going back to it, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school, was chosen because we knew, or he knew at the time, it would get tons of publicity. And, let alone, I'm going to hurry up and state this, he is pro-education and believes in education reform. See, if he were not pro-education... Why would he continue pressing, you know, at the time and even to today, these antiquated educational systems? So he chose that title because he knew it would get him onto more radio shows, more publicity and become even more controversial. And guess what? People thought he was stupid. People thought a lot of different things, but the book sold and sold. 
you know, Pat Flynn was talking about on one of his uh, podcasts. I can't remember when or what the title was. It was the last two years. But uh, Mind Valley also. Okay, so what's his name? Vishen Lakiani. I don't really watch Mind Valley anymore because I know they're uh, they be saying some weird stuff now. That, that's like cult. That uh, they're just weird folks. Anyways, um, he was like, "Why do people?" make these very outlandish titles. And he was talking about the guy, I think Mark Manson, who wrote the book, The um, uh, the, the Subtle... The, the Art of Subtle... The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. There we go. That's it. That's it. Uh-huh. You guys probably heard my ESL podcast. And I posted it uh, because, you know, I thought the girl, my friend Vart from Armenia, had some strong points in it. And I titled it that because it's very important to not give a fuck about other people's opinions, obviously. But going back to this title and the topic at hand, <sighs> he knew, Mark Manson knew that that would score big. I remember I was standing at the Thai embassy line out there in Vientiane, Loud, just about, oh my god, when was this? I was getting a visa, oh man, this had to be probably in about January or something like that. And I was standing there, and while I was standing there, I remember the next day I had gone back, I met this Brazilian girl who's now getting married, I'm so sad, man, she's one of the most beautiful models I've ever seen, she is a model, by the way, most beautiful model I've ever seen in my life, she's getting married now, I'm so goddamn distraught, anyway, so... What ended up happening, I went back the next day, this place was flooded. It was a goddamn pigsty. It took the longest to get my visa. Sweltering heat, no fans, no nothing. So, nonetheless, I remember these guys. They look like sex tourists, sex pats, I call them. And the next day I saw them, they were reading The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. They walked by me as, you know, they got their visa, they were walking back, and I heard one of them, he's like, I don't want to work for the rest of my life. And I'm like, dude, this is really interesting because just the day before I saw them and then the next day they're holding up the book and I think they're finally beginning to understand that working for these bullshit ass salaries here in Thailand, that's what you are known to do. Based on what your skills are at present, that's what it's getting you. So whatever you are engaged in right now, your skill sets you have right now, you're being remunerated for it. Now, if you double up and you continue learning a little bit about a lot in different areas, especially what I'm doing in investments and me bringing on, you know, this stock woman who I'm going to like trim up a podcast for my ESL and then put it on the paid podcast platform, the Business English Podcast. See, I learned about all these little things and I know a little bit about a lot and that's what you need to do. See, a lot of people, again, Les Brown, he's one of them. Oh, I used to be the jack of all trades, but a master of none. Listen, you could be a master of all. Some people focus on different areas. It could be relationship coaches or this or that. See, I'm the whole shebang because this personal development and what I've been talking about has changed my life and has changed my ideologies and my ideas, everything put together. And it's because... I continue to learn a little bit about a lot. You know, I was just talking to a recent uh, individual who I just started teaching at a place I haven't been to in a very long time. It's in a rich part of Bangkok. It's called Ramenta, right? So at the Starbucks Circle, which, you know, you drive into just right off the main road, there's like Lamborghinis and Ferraris and shit. Uh, and there's a lot of people. We're talking heavy hitters with money. You could tell. They got this very famous restaurant. I wouldn't say famous anymore, but Dean and DeLuca. I think... They were kicked. Uh, they no longer exist out there in America, but they only have a few branches left here in Thailand. I go in there. I got my slice of pizza, and I'm evaluating, just observing everyone that's around me and stuff like that. And so it was good to be back in that area after two years because I just love that. There's such a positive vibe there. So I went into my classroom, met this beautiful Thai girl who's a teacher there, and we were just having conversations and discussions about, you know, her speaking the language, et cetera, et cetera. And then I went into my classroom, and then I started teaching this guy, supposed to be a class of four, but one was actually in quarantine. She did a self-quarantine. She just came back from Japan. I said, yeah, you stay your ass away from me. And there was only one guy there. Me and him, we were discussing about so many things, and towards the end of class, I finally hit home on an idea. And it was about him. He wanted to develop the confidence. He's scared to speak up. So many things. He's like, how? You're so talkative. But you understand and you formulate all your conversations perfectly. How do you do that? How do you got the follow-up questions? And I'm like, dude, that is probably one of the best questions I've had all year. Because you have to listen with intent. You have to, you have to listen for the things that set the other person's soul on fire. The desire. And that's what I do. 
Of course, I got this from Dale Carnegie's How to Win and Influence People. This is how I've become such a prolific conversationalist. I don't even need to speak. All I have to do is listen with intent and just, ooh, ooh, she's really passionate about that. Okay. So in terms of that, I mean, what, is, what can you possibly involve into? You guys could check these out on all my interviews, especially on my podcast. I've developed from my podcast. I wasn't the greatest conversationalist ever. No, it was through books. It was through podcasts and me constantly beating on my craft and learning a lot of, or a little about everything. So that's what you're going to take with you today. Stay tuned for more, people. Over and out.